Sure can. Thank you, Marty. I appreciate this. Um, happy uh, Fat Tuesday to everybody. Uh, as you see from the first slide, we are raising funds uh, for Merlot Partners. Merlot Partners stands for Mountains, Rivers, Lakes, and Oceans. And as we get into the deck a little bit, I can explain what all this is. But the $100 million alternative real estate fund, and it's got a $5 million minimum investment. Um, I think it's kind of important to understand the genesis of you know, how this all came about. And I was researching the family office space for you know, a couple of years, and I recognized the mandates that were coming down for the family offices, uh, in particularly real estate, were around the traditional multifamily housing. It was around commercial real estate, storage units, data centers. Um, and then alternatives started coming in in the space, not necessarily real estate, but in life sciences, cannabis, um, fine art. And <laughs> I said to myself, why in the world is not luxury real estate part of the family office mandates? And Marty gave me the opportunity to speak at his event down in Art Basel um, at the beginning of December. And I recognized no one has ever offered this type of fund to the family office and high net worth individuals in the past. Um, so I guess as we begin this, it's kind of what we're not. And then we can discuss who we are, where we've been and what the fund is all about. But if you go to the second slide, um, you can see that Modern day real estate investment options, as we all know in the family office space, centers around commercial, high rise, strip malls, box, big box stores, multifamily, farm and ranch, hotel, medical, storage units, RV parks, subdivision developments, mixed use space. And then the last one is the world I've lived in for 25 plus years, and that's private amenitized communities and centered around statement properties. So a little bit about my background, um, born and raised in New York, uh, Chaminade High School guy in the 80s, uh, went to school at Clemson in South Carolina as a baseball player um, and realized then uh, I was not God's gift to the world as they told me I was when they were recruiting me. And it was time to, to kind of get on in the world and the next step in my journey, which was 10 years of corporate America. And um, with several different Fortune 500 companies, including Frito-Lay, I recognized through um, my family and what was important to us that I needed something a little bit different. And several friends of mine that were Clemson grads had gotten into this real niche market in luxury real estate back in the late 80s. Uh, they, they kind of originated down in Hilton Head, South Carolina, if, if you all are familiar with that, through Sea Pines and Palmetto Dunes and Palmetto Bluff and uh, different communities down in that area. And they were doing projects, some of them beginning in the Caribbean. And I always thought it was like Century 21 or Timeshare. So I kind of kind of stayed away from it. And the opportunity came about in 1998 for me to enter this space. So it's, again, not any of the other real estate, the normal real estate sectors that we discuss. It's a real kind of niche market in real estate centered around God's gifts of mountains, lakes, rivers, and oceans. Um, it's primarily second, third, and fourth homes for the owners in these communities. And I've had an opportunity over the last 25 years to spend um, on the ground in these communities all around the world. And this is just um, stateside communities, but the successful communities I've personally been involved with has been Mountain Air Country Club uh, in Burnsville, North Carolina, about 45 minutes northwest of Asheville. Trillium uh, up in Cashers, North Carolina. Hague Point, which was a community uh, off of Defusky Island. One Venue Range, a high-rise condominium or low-rise condominium. It was a three-story condominium in Charleston, right off the battery. Uh, Islands of Beaufort, uh, I did, I converted the top 30, 20 stories of two Liberty in Center City, Philadelphia to condominiums. I work with the Stewart family with uh, Guy 1, Guy 2, and Guy 3 Stewart at Half Moon in Montego Bay, Jamaica. They're based out of Bethesda Chevy Chase. And what they did, um, they wanted to kind of pay off back a house. They had never sold real estate in since 1950. And they tapped us to come in and do kind of their exclusive real estate and marketing for their 
royal villas that were on the Caribbean. Um, from there, you know, I was at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Uh, my job there was to own Peter Martin's Anxiety. Uh, he was a billionaire um, that was the founder. His dad was the founder of uh, the Playboy Mansion with uh, Hugh Hefner. And Peter was the founder of Morton Steakhouses worldwide and also the founder of the Hard Rock Empire. And he tapped me to come in and handle all of his real estate and marketing in 2006 to 2008. The results of that project, it was the largest single phase launch ever done in North American history. We sent out a billion, over a billion dollars of residential contracts in less than a two year time frame. Um, keep going down Greenbrier and White Sulphur Springs, Schaefer Mill in California and Tahoe, Cotton Bay and Eleuthera, the Ocean Club with Saul Kersner in Paradise Island in the Bahamas, kind of an oxymoron, Scottsdale Waterfront. It was right on the corner of Scottsdale and Camelback. That was a project with Starwood Capital. Um, I spent three years at Quartier Ranch down in Bernie, and then my most recent projects in, in Boot Ranch in Fredericksburg. So this is just some, some nature shots of these communities. Boot Ranch, um, kind of getting into the meat of this. What is Merlot and what are we going to be doing? We're raising $100 million for the fund, and we're going to provide access to some of the most high-profile residential communities throughout the United States and possibly touch some in the Caribbean. And I'm doing this from based off of 25 years of experience in this space. And what I recognized is developers more often than not do not um, market their properties to the general public. They don't put their available properties on their own websites. They don't put them on multi-listing service in these private communities. Really, the only way you have access to it is knowing somebody on the inside and becoming a founding member of that community or having the opportunity to reserve a property early on. So here's a perfect example. Boot Ranch in Fredericksburg, Texas. It's a 2,000 acre ranch. Um, we took Boot Ranch over uh, the development partners, Wheelock Street Capital on that project and um, Terra Verde Group. We took it over about eight years ago. It was owned by Hal Sutton, world-renowned golfer. He had a um, great golfer, but had never developed any communities before. He used Shreveport, Louisiana's police and firemen pension fund to fund the luxurious boot ranch. He had a grand vision, but not, didn't have any experience. So from 08 to 16, there was a total of 70 families that joined boot ranch and only 10 houses were built. And then we took over in the summer of 15, let the assets stabilize for about six months, began to market. And that result of that marketing um, ended up being about 250 million in land sales in the last eight years. And our statement properties, which is kind of the, the heart of Merlot Partners, our statement properties in Boot Ranch increased in value from 850,000 to over 3 million in just a couple of years. So if you were able or a family office was able to acquire one of these properties three years ago um, from directly from the developer, they'd have a three and a half X return on the value of that property in the aftermarket. Um, here's another community, Spanish Oaks. Um, it was developed by an oil and gas gentleman by the name of Daniel Porter with Corpus Christi Natural Gas. He was the expert and staying in his lane of gas, oil and gas, and developed Spanish Oaks in um, Bee Cave, Texas, and sold a grand total of four lots in two years. So they tapped us to come in to handle all of their real estate and marketing and work with their high net worth individuals. And we sold a little over 40 million in land sales in two and a half years for him. Land values increased from 189,000 to 525,000. Um, so you have a little over 320% return there in a three-year period. Hard Rock, I described, um, it was the largest single phase launch ever done in North American history. CFSB took out a full page ad in the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, LA Times, and the Atlanta Journal Constitution, announcing the largest single phase launch done. Um, and that was where I was at the helm running all of the real estate and marketing and owning Peter Morton's anxiety because he didn't want to deal with all the professional athletes, musicians, and celebrities. 
actually from there i got tapped by sheldon adelson and the las vegas sands to go to macau on the kotai strip in china where they were literally recreating the vegas strip in china as well so or on on the in macau spent time at the greenbrier with dolan pollock and tram and their statement properties which are arguably the best properties the community has to offer not houses not condos not townhomes we're talking about land and they had a little over a four, you know, four and a quarter percent return in a short period of time there. Mountain Air Country Club, there was another 4X return on land that was acquired early. Um, and you can clearly see by the by the picture there, it's surrounded by beautiful mountains. It's about 4,875 feet in elevation. So people are people are driven for second, third, and fourth homes. Families are driven to come to communities with second, third, and fourth homes by God's beauty of mountains, lakes, rivers, and oceans. Um, and in my 25 year career, I spent anywhere from three to five hours with over 8,000 families, husband and wife typically, and converted over 3,000 of those families into successful transactions in these communities that I'm showing you now. Hague Point on Defusky Island, the only way to get there is take a private ferry um, to, to Defusky Island over to Harbor Town or into the uh, across the Calabogie Sound into Hilton Head. Schaefer's Mill in Tahoe was another great project um, that I was involved with in like 2008 to 2010 timeframe, where it was a three and a quarter percent re 3x return on that those properties as well. So, you know, we're what we're simply trying to do with Merlot is grant access where family offices and high net worth individuals would not have typically have access to these communities. I know we're in a niche market as it relates to family office space, because, you know, out of all the events I attended in Miami at Art Basel and researching this space for a couple of years, no one has ever offered this as an alternative to family offices. So the results of, you know, we launched the fund in December, literally Marty's event down in Art Basel in Miami was, the, our first event to launch the fund. And um, since then, we've had great results, had a great response from, from that presentation. But I found the best way to do this for people to truly understand what we're doing is to immerse them into one of our existing communities. And we've had three family offices come to Boot Ranch in Fredericksburg, Texas, um, three weeks ago. Next week, I've got six family offices committed to coming. We have accommodations for them on site just to literally expose them to these communities that they otherwise would highly unlikely have had any exposure to. Um, and the developers, the reason why these are so popular and most importantly, why we can provide access is because the developers do not advertise these properties. It's my relationships with these developers that I've had for probably over 20, 25 years that's granting the fund access in our targeted communities, which are mainly geared around Texas, Florida, communities in Park City uh, and other parts of Utah, through the, um, through the Carolinas, California, Montana, Idaho, Wyoming. Those are gonna be our targeted communities. The $100 million, instead of buying one property at a time for a family office, the hundred million would go into buying and getting the access to these properties around mountains, lakes, rivers, and oceans in established developments. The developer in these communities have already spent a hundred million to over a billion dollars on their infrastructure. So we're getting access early to be able to acquire these properties. And instead of buying one property in one community, we're gonna be buying 60 properties across 20 different communities. So the the funds that are part of Merlot Partners are gonna be exposed and kind of spreading the trips across the table to all the best communities or many of the best communities in the United States. So we've taken the experience of 25 years and the relationships I've had with developers. We're targeting 25 communities for 60 to 70 of these statement properties. We'll provide early access. And the future is in the communities and the areas we're discussing now is Park City, Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, the Carolinas, Texas, and California. So Eric, just, questions Eric, just from, jump in here. 
from the Eric, group. I have a couple of questions. So are you getting these properties at a discount? What what kind of discount are you getting? If anything? Yeah, so typically to understand how developers work and, and a longer answer to a short question, but it might be helpful for some that don't understand this space. A developer will take 2000 acres, say, and divide it up into get it permitted and titled um, with the local jurisdiction and usually get depends on where they are, but say four to five hundred um, permits for either water taps or septic and well. Most of our communities are om almost all uh, city sewer and water, but they'll get, say, 450 water taps. We'll divide that community into 450 or the developer will divide that community into 450 lots. Some are going to be a lot more desirable than others. But the developer recognizes they're not going to get retail out of these. We're talking land. We're not talking structure. They're not going to get retail out of every lot. They're taking 2,000 acres that they acquired for $50 million or $150 million, dividing it up into 450 parts. And then we're coming in and selling the parts for them. And that's where my experience has been for 25 years. So the draw is the best properties aren't the last ones to be released ever because they have to get infrastructure to throughout the community, city, sewer, and water. They have to get the utilities out there. So we'll go in early in the community, either be founding members, and then we get to select whatever properties we want in phase one or phase two, or we'll go in early in another phase and the developer, to answer the question, the developer will offer an incentive, typically 10 to 20% of those properties. So you're getting the best properties with a 20% incentive. So use a real live example, a million dollar lot with a 20% incentive, the owner's allowed to say, uh, there is no negotiation. We don't negotiate any of the properties. Um, but what we'll do is we allow them to use that $200,000 incentive for this example, to prepay their dues to the club, to prepay their restaurant bill, to prepay accommodations on site if they don't have a house. Um, that they can stay in a private community, or they can reduce the basis of the lot by that incentive amount. So, you know, in the 3,000 transactions that I've had in 25 years across the world, um, in all these communities, I'd say 97% are paying cash for their land. Um, they're not leveraging that. They'll leverage it when they build a home. But um, so that incentive gets applied early on. So the fund will be able to be the beneficiary of that incentive. We'll get a million dollar property in Park City, say, for $800,000 before the road and the infrastructure goes in around that property. So the developer will allow us to reserve the property while they get their final plat and property report. And then we can convert that reservation deposit into a contract and close on the property with the incentive. So it's a great way to kind of, from an arbitrage standpoint, to you're getting in at a discounted value in the best, arguably the best lots in the community. Does that, does that make sense? Eric, I'm sorry. So this is a closed end fund. So the fund owns the property or the family offices own the property? Well, that's a great question. Yeah, it's a closed end fund. That we, The fund will own the property. So we're not going to burden the families to go to see every one of these communities. Um, because of my experience and relationship with these developers, and I've got the targeted communities, we'll identify the properties on behalf of the fund. And when the when the when we raise the capital to deploy, we'll just go ahead and convert those properties from reserve properties. I've got enough capital in 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 seed money um, that we're going to go ahead in advance and reserve properties on behalf of the fund. And then when the when we when we get fully subscribed with Merlot, we'll deploy that capital into these properties, but they're all going to be owned in the fund. So somebody asked in the last meeting, what are you going to do about um, di you know distributions? And most of the family offices that I've talked with don't want that distribution. So if we buy a lot at a million dollars, we have it you know for example, and we're getting it at 800, two years down the line, Everything is sold around it. Houses are getting built around it. And we get a call from the internal team saying, hey, would you be willing to sell this property? You bought it for eight. It, the market value is a million eight to two million now. Um, there's no other lots left. We'd have to make the decision to sell. If we decided to sell, 
Um, my legal group is Baker Hostetler on this. So in our fund documents, it, it stipulates that we can either give a distribution or we can roll through a 1031 exchange into another property. So the fund can continue to grow without, without having the tax issue. So in, in the duration of the fund is a 10 year fund. With, uh, yeah. It's five, you know, it could be year it, extension. Yeah. It, it's, it's a 10 year fund, but the reality of it is the kind of the exits five, three, not three, but kind of four to seven years. Cause these are established. Either they're an established developer who has developed these communities around the country before, or it's an established community we're buying into because some of their best properties are, haven't been released yet. Got it.